The Senate has denied reports that 72 billion naira allocated to the National Assembly in the recently passed 819 billion naira supplementary appropriation bill was palliative for lawmakers. They also deny padding the supplementary budget. Senator Yemi Adaramodu, who gave these clarifications, said the money is meant for facelift of the National Assembly and not for individual lawmakers. We'll be taking a look at this as our first hot topic this morning on The Breakfast. In recent years, growing enthusiasm in technology on the continent, particularly among the youth, is bringing technology closer to places they are needed. However, the gap to be filled remains wide, largely on account of limited investment, infrastructure and policies to drive growth. We'll be taking a look at this on The Breakfast as our second hot topic. We'll be taking a look at headlines on some national dailies this morning as well on Off the Press. Good morning. Good to have you join us this morning on The Breakfast. It is the technophile edition of the program and today we look at technology in a way that we do not look at it on any other day on The Breakfast. I am Maureen Menno Mweziwe. Glad to know that you are there. Okay, so the theme of the day is that AI might be the great equalizer. Nigeria, historically, lags behind the West in terms of technology. Typically, the most groundbreaking technology takes years to make it to Nigeria, and only after it becomes ubiquitous in the West could AI help us conceive ways to catch up to the West in tech. Once AI becomes a mainstay in our daily lives, how might our unique perspective of the world, culture, and peculiar social needs inform how we use AI to solve problems? Think about this today as we give you the technophile edition of the breakfast today. On our hot topic, we'll be taking a deeper look on this issue of AI, artificial intelligence. Okay, so top trending one, Nigerian court awards 50 million naira against Arik Air. A federal high court in Abuja has awarded 50 million naira against Arik Air over a 2018 incident in which its passengers were locked inside an aircraft. Justice Emeka Nwiti awarded the money in favor of the affected passengers, dismissing Arik Air's argument that the maltreatment of the passengers was due to its inability to land in Abuja. The incident occurred at the Malam Aminu Kano International Airport. It was a flight, a 2018 flight from Port Harcourt to Abuja, but the flight was subsequently diverted to Kano because of an aircraft accident, which led 40 passengers to sue the airline. And as a result, the pilot arrived in Kano with the passengers but did not allow them disembark from the aircraft. The airline has a history of maltreating its passengers. In April 2014, a video of passengers stuck on an Arik airplane bound for New York went viral. The air conditioning system was not functional. And as a result, the passengers became agitated and angry. Some of the passengers reportedly fainted from the ensuing heat while some could be seen taking off their clothes. One of the affected passengers in the 2014 incident was a Nigerian celebrity, Oluba Nkole Wellington, popularly known as Banky W. It was learned that there were delays in checking in, leading to excruciating heat after the passengers boarded the aircraft. They were reportedly locked inside the hot aircraft for hours till they rose to protest. Arik Air is a Nigerian airline operating mainly from two hubs at Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos and in Namdiazikewe International Airport in Abuja. So there you have it. Some people will be smiling home very soon. Well, fire raises a Lagos orphanage home, and that's our second top trending. Seven children were rescued 
uh, from that incident that occurred on Sunday after fire gutted a store building occupied by an orphanage home on Wale Madarola Street in the Aguda area of Lagos State. The Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, LASEMA, in a statement on Monday revealed that the inferno was caused by a power surge that originated from an air conditioning unit in the building, which quickly spread, you know, throughout the building. The agency received the distress call on the fire incident at about 2.43 p.m. And LASEMA disclosed that the children were formally handed over to the deputy director, Mr. Balogu, and Mrs. Rashidat Sadiq of the Child Protection Unit of the Lagos State Ministry of Youth and Social Development, who then formally handed the seven children over to the Red Cross. Thankfully, no injuries, no casualties were recorded in the near fatal incident. So we'll take a break and come back to give you off the press. Do stay with us.